Over the past few centuries, the relationship between humans and the natural world has gone from one of peace and harmony, when humans were not as capable as we are today to control the environment, into one of disconnect, where humans actively exploit the environment for personal gain. This change was inevitable in this modern society, where the ingrained cultural ideal is one of wealth, money, and materialistic possession. Whether it is cutting down forests for lumber or burning fossil fuels to produce energy, this exponential increase in energy consumption has led us to a global energy crisis that has environmental and humanitarian implications, and scientists worldwide are searching for solutions to these problems. Many of these solutions have come in the forms of alternative or renewable energies, and this video will explore one of these solutions that is cheap, renewable, and is done at Dickinson College. Dickinson College owns and operates a student-run biodiesel shop that provides fuel to some of its vehicles. The program is supervised by the Center for Sustainable Education, which engages students and faculty in sustainability outside the classroom with programs like biking at Dickinson, Eco Reps, and the Biodiesel Shop. The Biodiesel Program was founded in 2006 by students Jamie Bernstein and Kim Ogren, and since then there have been many other student employees. The shop is one of the first programs developed by the school that gives students and faculty alike the opportunity to explore renewable energy in a convenient location. The mission statement of the program is as follows. The Dignity College Biodiesel Program is a resource for all members of the college community, focused on research, education, and production. The program provides students with hands-on research opportunities, faculty with an accessible teaching tool in renewable technology, and the campus with an environmentally sustainable alternative to diesel fuel. We produce high quality biodiesel fuel in a safe environment and provide the community with a cleaner energy source that has less of an environmental impact than its alternative. Students at the shop collect waste vegetable oil from the Army War College, local restaurants, and the school cafeteria, which they are then able to convert into biodiesel. The fuel produced at the shop is used by the college farm's tractors, as well as some of Dickinson's diesel-powered fleet vehicles. Matt Steinman, the current assistant manager of the college farm, has played a crucial role in uniting the college's farm and the biodiesel shop. I've been a part of the Dickinson Biodiesel plant since 2007. From 2007 to about 2009, I've managed the plant, so I supervise students and help with the expansion of the project. And then, uh, I gave that up and went full time at the farm in 2009, and I've been helping out just as a ad hoc advisor since then. The Dickinson College Farm gets its fuel from the biodiesel plant for free, so we we are all under the same umbrella, and that's a really nice benefit for the farm. We like to use the biodiesel fuel to power our equipment. We have a lot of trucks and tractors uh, and other equipment that runs on diesel fuel, and so. It's great to be able to power up with fuel that's made by our students here on campus. It's interesting, when we buy new equipment for the college farm, we always try to buy diesels. If we're, if we're gonna buy a, um, a internal combustion engine, uh, we look for things that are diesel powered because we want to be able to power it with a fuel that's as sustainable as possible. So, for example, recently we, we bought a Gator, it's like a, heavy duty four wheeler that we use for farm chores. We chose one that was diesel so we could run on biodiesel and we're doing that today. The biodiesel shop is located on the south side of our facilities management building off of North Orange Street. The shop has two main workstations. First, there's the main room where, the, where biodiesel is produced. In it, there is the methanol lye tank, the preheat tank, the reactor, the three wash dry tanks that hold up to 140 gallons each, and the two Purolite tanks below them. Behind the Purolite tanks is the final holding tank that holds the finished biodiesel. And finally, there's the wash station. After running tests or pulling samples, after clearing it, we have to wash our materials, make sure that they're clean and ready to be used. Next we use our own soap that we make from our glycerin byproduct to wash our dishes, our testing dishes. 
Good stuff. I like mine. In the testing station, they have a computer for research and a work area where employees have all the tools they need. At the testing desk, they have a variety of graduated cylinders and hazardous chemicals that are used throughout the process for sample tests, just to ensure the highest quality fuel. The production of biodiesel can be very dangerous, so there are plenty of measures the shop takes to ensure safety of its staff. When producing biodiesel, you're dealing with flammable or combustible material, fumes that could damage your eyes, and even be extremely dangerous to breathe in. But there's always a first aid kit. Now I will go through the 13 steps and tests that go into producing a batch of biodiesel at Binghamton College. Step one. The first step in creating biodiesel from waste vegetable oil is to pour the oil through a filter on top of the food tank filter out any leftover food products. Once there's enough waste vegetable oil in the preheat tank, you can go on to step two, which is to pump the oil into the main reacting tank and heat it to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it has reached 130 degrees, you can draw a sample from the reactor and perform the first test, fatty acid test. This is one of the most important tests, as it determines how many grams of lye are needed to break apart the fatty acids. Once this is calculated, you can go on to step 4, which is to mix the appropriate amount of lye and methanol to create methoxide. However, lye is very dangerous, so you have to put on the appropriate safety gear first. It takes about 30 minutes for the methanol and lye to fully react, and when this does, you can move on to step 5. Step 5 is to pump 80% of the methoxide into the heated waste vegetable oil and let it react to that temperature for 2 hours. Step 6. After the two full hours, turn the heat off and let the solution settle overnight. The reaction that just took place turns the waste vegetable oil into a combustible diesel fuel and leaves a byproduct of glycerin, which is heavier than biodiesel so it settles to the bottom. The next day, you have to drain the glycerin from the reaction tanks so with mostly biodiesel in the tank. Step 7 is to heat the tank back up to 130 degrees and pump the remainder of 20% of the methoxide into the reactor tank. And then you repeat step 6. After draining the glycerin the next morning, it is time to perform the second test, the 27-3 test. The 27-3 test determines if the reaction is fully complete. To perform this test, you have to take a sample from the reactor tank and mix it with dry methanol and isopropyl alcohol in a graduated cylinder. Shake it for 30 seconds and let it settle out. If the solution is clear with no bubbles, the reaction is complete. If not, you have to go back to step 6 and add more methoxide. Step 9. Step 9 is methanol recovery. For methanol recovery, you heat the reactor up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit to send the methanol through a distillery. This process takes two to six hours. And once you complete it, you can pump the biodiesel into the wash tanks. Step 10. Step 10 is to wash the biodiesel with water to remove any suspended glycerin. You wash it by misting 10 to 15 gallons of water, which takes about two hours. Let this settle overnight to ensure complete glycerin removal. In the morning, drain the glycerin once again. Step 11. Step 11 is to dry the fuel and it takes a full 24 hours. Wet fuel can cause complications in engines. So to ensure quality fuel, there are three more tests to run after drying it. So before you want to take 
samples to do your testing, you want to use a purge jar or a purge bucket to um, clear any impurities left in the um, that might be that might have settled in the bottom of the tank. Basically, just to clear the plumbing lines. There's the acid test to make sure all the acid is moved, the soap test to make sure all the glycerin is moved, and the sandy gray test to make sure there's no, no water left in the valve zone. Let's go! Pass! Woo! Once all these tests have passed, you can pump the biodiesel from the wash tanks into the final storage tanks, when it is then ready to be used by any standard diesel engine. While biodiesel is just one of the many renewable energy sources, I do not see it expanding too much further beyond small-scale operations like that of Tingas and College. Biodiesel does have the capability to, to be produced on a large scale, and in some areas it is. But the largest plants only produce about 4 million barrels of fuel a year adding up to about 10% of the world's diesel fuel consumption. That's why small-scale operations like Dickinson Shop are great because it educates the community on renewable energies and it can save some money in the process. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and now you have a better understanding on biodiesel.